Hi. Whoa. Hello. Look at that. Wow. That's cool. I might have to lean over your lap. Good morning, everybody. The survivors. Are you are you guys awake? Special panel here. Uh, I don't. I don't know if anything like this has been done before. No, it has. It's the first time thing for you. All. Yeah, and, and especially at this scale. So, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be introducing quite a few people, yeah. as you can see. This it's is like a, the Last Supper of panels. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what this panel is called is families and entertainment. And what's really special about this is that we have a lot of. Parents, child, get to yeah. talk about their experiences in the industry and, and how they got into it and how how the next one got into it. And it's going to be a really insightful panel. We're going to open it up to Q and A um, a little bit later on. But uh, to start things off, I think it's time to bring some people up. Are you guys ready for this? <laughs> Introduction. All right. So for starters, we are going to welcome to the stage Blair and Maddie Peters. How you doing? Next up, please welcome to the stage Monique and Michelle Kreber. Make some noise for Ian and Claire Corlett. And our next pair, it is Brian and Brenna Drummond. You are the next contestants on. So I guess for starters, How's everyone doing down <laughs> down line? This might take the whole panel. How's everyone doing? <laughs> oh, good. Uh, and pass, pass the potatoes, please. Yeah. <laughs> how, how you doing down there? Yeah. So, um, I guess what we could kick things off with, uh, if uh, Blair and Maddie would like to start, we're, we're all interested to hear about, you know, how you guys got into entertainment and, and what led to it becoming a family ordeal. And it, it'd be cool to hear from all the pairs, but should we start with the... Peters. Uh, Let's do it. Okay, since I'm oldest, I'll start. Uh, so, Maddie, as you all know, you were at the uh, CMC panel. You know that Maddie is an artist, and she uh, always drew. Uh, I too was I was an animator, uh, directed some cartoons, and so we used to bring all these storyboards home when she was little. And uh, Maddie would, you know, uh, kind of ask me what I was doing, and and uh, would go off and draw and, and be curious about the business. And uh, then we started to do these things called uh, animatics. I don't know if you guys know what they are, but it's basically you shoot the storyboard and then you do voices and you kind of put it together before you animate. And I'd watch them and be like, why is there no color? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, she did. And she would revise my drawings sometimes. Uh, and anyway, I'll cut to the chase. So as the years went by, uh, you know, we would we would go and do uh, voice records, and uh, and a lot of times uh, we would need like small kids to work for cheap or free, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, one of those shows that I recall was. Uh, Something Ian, Ian can elaborate on it later, but Ian Corlett created a show, a wonderful show, called Being Ian. And I don't know if you guys have seen that, but you really should. There's 65 episodes somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where you'll find them, but uh, they're pretty cool. And anyway, uh, Maddie, I remember, I'll let you do it, but we, we had to bring them in um, to do annoying preschoolers, which Maddie was one at the time. <laughs> So, uh, do you remember? Do you remember that voice, Maddie? Do you remember what you did? Is Maddie's mic on? Here. So you're on now. Okay. All right, I'm on. Um, yeah. So we were cast. We were typecast as annoying preschoolers, and I had a line that was, uh, "Excuse me, Mr. Man, I don't know how to read." <laughs> and uh, Claire was. 
was on that too. Claire was on the same show, but uh, yeah, I was. I'm sure they'll elaborate on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so Maddie did a bunch of that, and then um, she worked on uh, a show called Yakety Yak. Anybody heard of that show? Okay, so uh, Brian was a voice in that, and so was Ian, and I'm going to make them do those voices. Uh, Ian, what was your character's name again? My character was Mr. High Pants. <laughs> And he was very stylish and ran a candy store. <laughs> and he was kind of scary. <laughs> anyway, um, and and um, Brian, <laughs> Brian played a pineapple. I played a little guy. His name was Keo. He was he was Yaki's best friend, and he, he looked like his head was a pineapple, and his body was a person, and his dad was actually just only a pineapple that lived at home in a basket on a table. <laughs> It's a great show. <laughs> it was. It was actually. It was on Nickelodeon. Anybody remember that show? Yeah. If you remember, please help revive it. I think it should be back on TV. It's funny. Netflix. Yep. Um, anyway, so Maddie sang in the theme song for free. Scream. It's more like scream. <laughs> yeah. It was like yakety yak. Don't talk back. Right? What did you guys do? You screamed. Well, we at the did end? the yakety yak, not the don't talk back. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was and, like, there, there was a bunch of little kids just kind of screaming yakety yak. Yeah, yeah, that's all they had to do. And then they had to laugh at the end, right? <laughs> uh, I even brought Maddie's little sisters in for that and cousins. So yeah, we, you know, the child labor, it just extended to <laughs> free. But then, then, um, in our case anyway, and everyone has their own story, but uh, then Maddie kind of wanted to do this more. She, she was kind of a mimic at home, right? You'd mimic us a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I'm gonna tell this story, you interject when you think I'm wrong, Maddie. But, so the big thing was, uh, a show called Martha Speaks came up. Has anybody seen that? Yeah. Martha yeah. Speaks. It was, it was uh, second longest running Studio B show to uh, MLP, actually. Uh, we did about 100 episodes. And the early stages, we were casting the show, and uh, there was a little girl named Helen, and they wanted uh, like a real 10-year-old to, to uh, voice Helen. And, and so I kind of, I wasn't producing the show, my partner was, and so I threw Maddie's uh, name into the mix. And uh, as I recall it, it was, there was a ton of people trying out. And in fact, you guys, a little bit of trivia, um, the the uh, the dog Martha was actually voiced by uh, by uh, Tabitha, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, and she her story is a longer one. Ian might talk about that later because he he did at the bar last night, so I'm thinking he can remember. <laughs> um, but uh, so so no, nothing was cast, and it was like a huge deal because it was a PBS show, and. Um, so Maddie actually did had like a whole bunch of people to compete with, but she did very well on her own. So I got her in the door, and then uh, she went through multiple, uh, you know, they call them callbacks, right? So you try out and then you make it, the list goes from like 100 to, uh, it went to three, and Maddie made it. And uh, it was kind of exciting, but it, you know, wasn't, she didn't get the gig yet, so, um, we got the call, my partner got the call, and he said, so bad news, they really like Maddie, but uh, they wanted someone with experience. And that's fair enough, but they wanted a 10-year-old with experience. I thought that was kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, I had to tell Maddie that. I remember I had to go home. Do you, do you remember this? Yes, I definitely remember it. Do you remember like, what you said? Yeah, I was like, well, how am I supposed to get experience if they never give me a chance? Yeah, she said it, and she said that in that voice, and I went, yeah, that kind of makes sense, And uh, but I, I couldn't really do much about it, so we kind of let it go. Uh, she would cry in the fetal position for weeks. No, um, no she, she got over it pretty quickly. Anyway, um, so uh, time went by, and then, uh, then we, uh, I don't know if you guys knew this little trivia about Maddie, but she also played softball. Uh, she was a really good pitcher. I thought she was better than she thought she was, but anyway, um, and I coached her, and we were on our way to the provincial championship for little kids, 
and I, we get a call from the person at uh, WGBH saying, yeah, we, we'd like to try her again. And I'm like, oh, we can, we're going to this tournament. And so anyway, Maddie had to go there uh, with her, our bags and uh, Carol flew up from WGBH and Maddie uh, had to audition a whole episode or two. Something like that. Yeah, something like that, do you remember? Um, I, yeah, I think I recorded an episode. Yeah, and uh, then off we went, and then we found out that uh, she got the gig of, of uh, Helen, and uh, she was pretty excited. So uh, that's what I remember, and then from there, it gets a little fuzzy, I think. You... All right, how long is this story? <laughs> no, it's not. I'm done. I'm done. Now it's up to you. Now, what, what do you remember after that? You got an agent or something after that? Um, yeah, I think that's when... Uh, I got an agent and then I worked on Martha Speaks for years and years. That was what, five years I would five say? Five years, yeah. Like... Um, and it was amazing and I got to see Tabitha once a week, every week, and she'd bring cookies, so it's yes. awesome. Mm. Got to miss school, got to miss math class. <laughs> yeah, and that's yeah. the end of our story. We're done. That's the end. Uh, well, and then, no, and then you, then of course, then, then you've got the gig on this show. Yeah, that, yeah. And you've been doing that for how long? I don't actually know. I've been saying different things to every person. It's been like, what, how many years? What, yeah, what year did My Little Pony Season 1 come out? Well, 2010. 2010. The game 2010. started seven years ago. So seven years, Maddie, if you want okay, to do so some math. 14. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't take math because I was doing Martha Speaks, so I actually can't calculate that. She's an artist now. She doesn't do math. <laughs> well, that's because she missed all those math classes. <laughs> Anyway, that's, that's kind of our story, and uh, we'll put it over to uh, Monique and Michelle. Yeah, th th some, some similarities probably in all of our stories, uh, given that all the parents, in, uh, at least one of the parents in each family is a professional entertainer. Uh, when Michelle was born, uh, Michael and I were both performing extensively and recording, and uh, we also talked quite a bit, and we had students coming to our home. And so uh, when she was about six weeks old, I resumed teaching and had brought in someone into the house to kind of keep an eye on her while I was teaching, but then I realized I'd rather have her with me, and she loved watching all the kids and, and adults and teens have their lessons. So I started parking her in the, my studio, and Michael did the same in, in his recording studio, and we just let her be there watching all of this <laughs> and listening to everything, unless she got fussy, and then we would have the other person take her out. So we opted to keep her with us, and we would, even from, I think, a couple of weeks old, I took her to uh, my gigs if they were concerts that people could go to and we would take her to musicals and, and all of our shows and by the time she was two uh, we did a huge show at the Queen Elizabeth Theatre in Vancouver and it was about 3,000 seats and it was a, a sold out show and Michelle stayed with my mom in the audience and we told her she could come up on stage for the final song and we have this video the Queen Elizabeth stage is massive like, yeah. it's, yeah, it's a, a, that's a stage and this little tiny 20 <laughs> pound two-year-old Michelle we have this video of her on the last song she's booking it across the stage and jumps into her arms and then buries her head in my hair and the whole song I'm holding her and she's in my ear you can't hear it on the video and she's going mama mama I wanted to be with you the whole time mama so I don't want to be with you I want to be on stage <laughs> just worked her into the show and, and you know a lot of people say you forced your child to no actually yeah. we did not we had a hard time keeping her off the stage um, so from there um, Michael was producing some children's uh, DVDs uh, with music and educational type things and there was one when she was four that needed uh, different animal sounds so we just submitted her as one of the sounds of, what were you I was a swan, I think. I think you were a swan, yeah. I was a singing baby swan. And so she had a little solo line on that, and like Blair said, we were looking for a cheap slash free child labor. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and but, you know, we had a recording studio in our house, so she saw people in a studio all the time. She knew how that worked. And uh, later that year, we recorded a big Christmas album in a lovely studio in Vancouver called Armory Studios. And she was there, and she was watching the whole thing the whole time. She'd go to sleep on the couch every night when it got late with her teddy bear and um, 
one night she said, I want to sing something. So we put her in the booth and she sang this little solo that ended up on the CD in front of this uh, kick and jazz number that Michael did. And uh, so that was her first real recording experience. And after that, similar to Blair's story, she uh, we, we got approached to provide children's vocals for, a, uh, it was actually a Japanese English language program to teach Japanese children how to speak English. And they were doing a massive series, a big company, and they needed kids. So I pitched a lot of the kids that I work with, and I put in Michelle. I did not put in any last names. I did not say that our child was in the mix. I didn't want them to feel pressure to choose her or not to choose her or anything. And they chose her. And so then I said, okay, well, that's our daughter. Do you have a problem with that? You know, and they said, no. And I think you did that for seven years. Yeah, <laughs> it was a big gig. And, and in the middle of that, um, she got an eight. We were looking for a voiceover agent because I realized that was sort of an angle that she was really good at and loved doing. And didn't find one, but in the process of that, we uh, we found, uh, one of the agents we approached said, "Well, I don't do voiceover, but I'd love to take her for film and TV if she's interested in that." And we hadn't considered that at all, but she wanted to do it, so we signed her up with her. And one day she phoned and said, "You know what? I have a, an audition. That's a voiceover audition, which they opened up to all the agents because they're having trouble casting the show, and it was uh, a reboot of Charlie Brown or Peanuts." Um, called Motion Picture Comics or something like that. Do you remember? Yeah, that? Yeah. that was through your studio, wasn't it? Yeah, we we did the service work for the the Peanuts family, and now, ironically now DHX owns the Peanuts. Oh yeah, yeah. that's wild. Yeah. And so apparently, at least we were told, they cast in various cities and they were trying to find voice matches for the original 1963 uh, Christmas special. And uh, Michelle booked the role of Lucy. So uh, even though she didn't and have a Claire voice, it was, was the first gig she really booked. And Claire, that's where we yeah. met Claire yeah. and Ian. That was the first time she like 12 years ago. Wow. She was Sally. Um, so then she did that, and, and shortly after that, she started doing some big musical theater roles in Vancouver. And then your first on screen thing was a Disney movie. Uh, you were just turned 10, I think. Or not, yeah. I think I'm you not just sure. turned 10, yeah. Search yeah. for Santa Claus. And then you want to just quickly cap off with how you ended up on MLP? Sure. Um, so there was two rounds of auditions. The first one, they were trying to figure out which age range they were going for for the main six. And so I'm not sure if you guys auditioned for the main six characters. But yeah, I, we did. I did. Yeah. Um, and uh, obviously they went with adults eventually. Um, but I remember auditioning for multiple characters then. And then about three months later, I think, they opened it up to these younger characters. And I auditioned for, I think, like Sweetie Belle, Aqua Blue. They, they basically they give you a pool of size to choose from. To choose from. And it's funny because at the time you don't know when you get this pool of characters. Often you don't know which ones are going to end up being bigger roles than others. So we got this pool of like the Cutie Mark Crusaders plus that character Twist who never and came back, and Silver Spoon and Diamond TR. Like they were all in one big package. And you say, like, okay, uh, I'm going to choose two to th two or three characters to read in the audition. So I think I chose, like, Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle, and I don't know, I think I chose Twist or something. Anyways, and uh, um, I went in for I'm, two auditions? I think it was only two auditions, an audition and a callback. And they called me and said, you know, you booked the role of Apple Bloom. I think only about a month after I auditioned, so it wasn't too long of a wait, but pretty simple story. I mean, you know, our agents get us the auditions, and it was just like another show for us. It was just another gig, and never expected it to blow up as it did, but very, we're lucky in that way. And that we also booked characters that we didn't know at the time were going to be really prominent roles, as yeah. opposed to some of the other. Um, uh, yeah, so we, we got lucky, and uh, we've been enjoying being on the show ever since. So that's, that's our story. Yeah, and there's lots of interaction, because you and Claire also, well, Claire had a probably be our first story, but a uh, major thing with Dinosaur Train, and we met you again on that. Right. And Michelle did a couple of episodes. Yeah. Yeah. And then she did a season of Martha Speaks with you. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 So there's lots of times when we've got to interact with all the other actors. And Claire and I have done film and TV together as well. That's right. Yeah, yeah. we did uh, a movie called Smart Cookies with oh, each other. Yeah. And we're Girl Scouts. Oh, yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah, it's like Peanuts, and then, uh, 
My Little Pony and then the Smart Cookies and then, yeah, yeah. It's cool. So I guess it's right. me. Is it Over me? to you. It's us? It's us. Um, okay. So our story starts um, with me being a voice actor. Um, and then along come these two children, uh, my son, who's now 20, and this one, who you know, who's 18. And uh, voice acting, you need to read. That's kind of a big uh, part of the job description. So Philip, my son, being a little older, he started in uh, radio commercials or TV commercials, but just voiceover, because he was a really good little reader, wasn't he? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Correct answer. So, one day, like, he, but he wasn't what I would call like a natural actor, but when you're a, a little boy, uh, or a little kid, if you can read the, your, and read well, you're miles ahead in becoming a, a voice actor, and he could take direction. So, when I, we, I remember this one night in particular, we had a, a radio commercial coming up the next day, and we were working with him at the dinner table after dinner. So I would play the other role and he was reading his. He was working really hard at it, just getting it, getting it. Okay, do it again, do it again. And he was really rehearsing it. And this one goes, um, once we're done, we're all done, Philip's confident, okay, it's ready, the session's tomorrow morning at night. I wanna try it. So she tried, I don't think you could read that. Nope, and still can't today. <laughs> And she basically memorized his part, and yeah, and was really good. Like she just got it, and I went, "Oh, okay, that's interesting." So this guy needs to really work at it, uh, but he can read really well and he can take direction. And this one just gets it. So she's my favorite child. Yay! <laughs> but that's Jokes. not true. That's a joke. Um, this is being streamed and Philip's watching. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's, watching. Well, he's, he's heard all this before. Because the counterbalance to this, and this really has nothing to do with voice acting, but it does have to do with parenting, is uh, Philip is a real natural musician. Yeah. He plays drums, guitar, bass, and he plays them really well, and he just gets it. This one <laughs> plays piano, Not guitar, well. ukulele. Yeah, now that's added to the list. Yeah, they added that to the list. Uh, <laughs> recorder and, you know, all those the normal instruments. But you have to work at it. Uh-huh. Like you're not a natural. Nope. Yeah, so, you know, such is the balance of life. Yeah. Anyway, so Philip started the, the second generation of voice acting. And then Claire followed very quickly behind because she was a natural. And, but, and, and I think the first animated series that either of them did was Being Ian, the one that Blair referenced earlier. Right. We were both in that, my brother and I. Yeah. My brother had a bigger part, I think. Yeah, well, right? Philip, Philip had a speaking part. He, he played a little kid in, in a preschool that had to pee really bad. And then, oh, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, Ian and his dumb brothers were trying to run this preschool kindergarten, <laughs> and they weren't doing a very good job, and he ended up peeing his pants. pants. It was really funny. <laughs> Hilarity and soup. He had some, what was the line? Do you remember? Uh, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. No, but then he was like, oh, I did it. Oh, <laughs> too late. Some, I don't know. It was really cute. <laughs> and this is just this yellow puddle under, under yeah. the door. Anyways, My heart was strictly just screaming. Your, yours was screaming with, with Matt. It was like group stuff. Your cousins. Was it your cousins? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a little group. I know yeah. that. I just had to cry. So that was the introduction to it all, and then fast forward a few years, uh, we all got cast, me and my two kids, in a show called Dinosaur Train. Yeah. Preschool PBS uh, animated program that was just unbelievable because we all had to audition for it. Yeah. What I didn't realize is that the creator of the show, uh, Craig Bartlett, who also created Hey Arnold, you know that show? Yeah. Uh, is a super great guy, and he was intentionally kind of going for families that, like, I, I don't know if he set out to do that, but uh, Kathleen Barr, you know, voice actor Kathleen Barr, and her kids 
right. also got cast, well, her son. Well, her son got cast, and then her son grew up, and his voice changed, and then her, her daughter took the guy's role. Yeah. Which is so funny. Exactly like they sound the same. Yeah, she, he, she sounded exactly like her older brother. Yeah. And both, both um, Alex and, is it Alec? Alec or Alex? Alexander. Uh, Alexander. Alexander. Both Alexander and my son Philip got x nade because of the old voice change. <laughs> yeah. It just happens, right? In, in kids' shows. So it was the weirdest thing because we all got cast in this series and we all went to work together. Yeah. You know how, how you know, normal jobs you have take your kid to work day? Yeah. This was, like every... we're all going to work today. Yeah. Every day. And I sat, you, you've been in some of them. I sat yeah. as far away as I could from them because I just didn't, oh, I don't know. I'm, just, I'm not the dad right now. Someone else is directing, yep. even though I had lots of opinions. And Michelle did a couple, yeah. or some guest characters in it. Brian has done a ton of stuff in it, um, like a ton of different characters. It's very, like, very inclusive show. Yeah, it's a great show. And, and Wait, just, I think Brian was my dad. Really? Yeah. What was what, what dinosaur did you play? I don't Frogs. know. We were like Myasaurus. Flu dinosaurs. Flu dinosaurs. Therizinosaurus was one of them. I was a lot of dinosaurs. Yeah, you were. Gosh. Of course, I was. I was uh, Maddie's dad on Martha Speaks. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone's dad. He was your dad. And Ashley Ball was your mom. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. And yeah. and just to to finish off the sort of parenting career thing. Um, Claire really, really wanted to do this. She really did. And, and connected to it was, I want to do movies and TV, which was a giant no in our household. That's, that was just like, no, no, you're not going to do it because I've seen these little kids who get into TV and movies and there's lots of great stories and there's lots of awful stories. And a lot of it has to do with this. You know, what do you look the like? What do you shape person. like? What do you, you know, how long? You have you a gross do? nose. Yeah, <clears throat> exactly. That's what a, every 11 year old wants to hear about themselves. And, and especially with girls, unfortunately. I mean, it's, it's even heightened more. And there's a lot of rejection in the business anyway, even on the voice side. Like, I mean, you're constantly just asking for a job and getting rejected. But when it comes to your face and, and a little girl, we were just like, no, I don't, I don't, we don't need that. But she kept at it. Like, I, I want to do movies, I want to do TV, me, 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 me. So that's what she said. That's exactly what And And also, you don't know my wife, but she is like the anti-stage mom. It's like, no, no, not interested. Actually, that doesn't interest me. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean. She gets pretty, to decide. That's pretty accurate. Because she's got to do the driving around, right? She's, she's got to be into it. Not anymore. So, ultimately, we had to give in because if your child really, 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 really wants to do something, yeah, you know, they demonstrate it. And it's not like we were going, oh, you must do this. And, and okay, fine. Twisted our arm. And then she started doing uh, movies and TV. And um, here we are. Yeah, we're done. What up? Yo, I'll just skip them. Yeah, we're done. See ya. Oh. <laughs> Is it my turn? <laughs> are you asleep? Ditto, 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 ditto. Yeah, very. It's the, the stories are pretty amazingly similar. My wife and I both went to theater school, and we're both performers. Um, so uh, we never actually thought about our kids being performers. This was just it was our thing. And um, but when we were doing. Before I did too much voice, I was doing film, TV, and theater, and we were we'd be asked to go to auditions for for TV commercials. And um, I remember the first some of the first things we had to do we'd go to commercials. I'd say we want a mom and a dad. And my wife and I would show up, and and my agent said, well, "Why don't you bring Aiden, who's our older son, or Brenda, because they need a baby?" I'm like, "It's a mom and a dad and a baby." So I'm like, "Okay," and we'd go to the audition and. Well, we really like the baby, but we to get different parents because, you know, pretty <laughs> cute, cute, cute baby. So we had our kids were in some commercials, but we auditioned with them. They were cast and we weren't. But did I think you, did you eat that night? Did you feed them? Yeah, 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 we fed them. The very first thing Brenna did was um, actually it was a, a U.S. National Ford commercial with me where I was actually giving her a bath in a kitchen sink. She was about six months old. So she was wow. she was naked on camera for her first role. Wow. She was happy to do it. 
to know this. But, Get that out of the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was her first one. Um, uh, and I was I was so excited because I thought I was going to make some, some pretty good money on this because it was U.S. National. But I got downgraded because they ended up just shooting, they, even though they shot front shot of me and the baby and over my shoulder, they only used the over the shoulder shot of the cute baby and the back of my head in the spot. So they were like, well, actually, it's a downgrade to like extra. <laughs> SOC. That's silent on camera, but. It started there with our kids kind of coming to stuff with us. She did like Tickle Me Elmo commercials with her brother and stuff like that. And her first gig was similar to a story from Dinosaur Train. My son Aiden, who does did tons of voice in TV and movies when he was younger and is in theater school now, he did a series called Eon Kid, uh, which was a dubbed Korean uh, series. And Aiden played this uh, the lead boy, the Eon Kid, for a ton of episodes. And then about, after they finished all the episodes, a couple years later they came back and they wanted to add some sequences that were removed. And they brought Aiden in, I'm like, oh man, he was, he's 14 now, his voice changed, I don't think he's going to be able to do. I can still do it. did. And I told them, I don't think he can, they're like, well maybe we'll just pitch it. And it did not sound right. And when we went into the studio and heard his original 11, 12 year old voice, we're like, Aiden said, that sounds like Brenna. When I was 11, I sound like Brenna does now. And I was like, yeah, you do. So we brought Brenna in, oh. and Brenna took over Aiden's role on Eon Kid as the little boy for these added episodes and sounded just like him. And after that, ended up in anime and a few series playing boy voices for a while, till I think the first girl you, were, you played was Babs. Or, or Daphne. No, Daphne Displetosaurus on Dinosaur Train. Right. Oh, she was yeah. on Dinosaur Train. Oh, yeah, you were on that as well. Yeah, so she did Dino Train as well. But and then Dinosaur Train. Yeah. But yes. Daphne. Okay, why Every didn't you guys... Every voice actor I know did Dinosaur Train. I think. Yeah, who didn't do Dinosaur Train here? <laughs> we all did. Did you do it? I'm the only one who didn't. I'm the odd one out Maddie there. didn't get the call on that, you guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it was just kind of a family thing. We Just like Ian said, we've, we've never been... Well, you got to get out there and do this, and, and it's got to be part of your life because it's so great. I was all the other way. It's like you guys have to want to, and if stuff comes along and you're still excited about doing it, yeah. subsequently I've got a son that's going in theater school currently, and um, Britta who's starting in a few months for in production for theater because she's the more of the artist of the family as well, design, uh, costume design, set, filming. I'm really hoping the third one wants to be a surgeon or <laughs> an accountant. Something. Something. Someone to look after me in my old age. <laughs> uh, but that's uh, how it began. Do you remember sort of how you felt about the process when you did some of your first stuff? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, I definitely remember it being a very big surprise when I got the role for Beth because it was very, very rare that I actually got the girl. I think uh, Daphne might have been first in Dinosaur Train, but, and she was also very prominently uh, sort of a tomboy character, and Babs is quite similar too, I'd say. So, um, uh, yeah, for the most part, I'd be doing a lot of dubbing, and also, uh, majority actually of uh, anything that I had recorded previous to Dinosaur Train or Babsy was all by myself in a tiny little booth <laughs> with the director and engineer, and that was it. That was like, as much as I really knew about recording and uh, things that I would find funny would just slow it down because it was only me and I'd be like going all loopy laughing at things by myself in this booth. And, <laughs> but uh, so when I did Babs and Dinosaur Train, I was actually with a cast. So I remember that being really intimidating. I was like, I'm actually with other people, uh, pressure, <laughs> I don't want to mess up. Um, and, we, and we were really a scary group. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I remember it being really fun, and uh, uh, I distinctly remember, and um, for Babs, uh, the second episode that she appears, I think it's the Apple Gang reunion, everybody in that room has like country accents, part of the Apple Gang, and I'm the one that's from Mayhem. I'm like, don't slip into it. Don't start talking from the South or something. I'm like, no, you gotta. So it was really hard because I'm normally just by myself, so that's all I really hear. But yeah, it was very fun. There you have it. The Back to the moderators. Yeah. Well, yeah. my son here, we started <laughs> as Jack the Hutt, Star Wars. That's our very proud. All right, so we want to open up to Q&A for you all. There's a microphone.
come right there. If you want to go to the front in a calm and orderly fashion, we can take questions from the audience for our panelists. Okay. Yay! A bunch of proud parents up there. You all done some pretty great work. I'm a proud well, they're parent. Pretty, they're pretty great kids, so yeah. that's, that's part of it. Oh, there's so many Powerful music. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a heavy metal bullfight. fight. <laughs> okay. Are we on? Uh, All right, fire away. We're live. Into it. We're live. Oh. Yeah. So, first question. Okay. Um, this might be a bit of a bummer, but um, how does Bev Seed hold scissors? Ooh. How does she hold How does she scissors? hold scissors? That's an excellent question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're custom made. Like a, double moves, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> they're big scissors. Yeah. 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 Like that's the best I got. I didn't think about that. That's Some of them are animated. <laughs> well, we, I'd like you can sign a drawing before the end of the day with Babs holding scissors. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Uh -oh. Question. Oh, he's writing it out. Oh, they're writing them down. It's a long one. It's kind of tedious. I love this uh, background. I know. I don't know, but I like your pants. The freestyle rap. Okay. Uh, so, can you maybe just tilt the microphone up a little closer to you? Thank you. There we go. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so I'm just curious, uh, did any of you know each other, like, like, did the families know each other prior to the acting careers, or were all of the interaction through, through the jobs that you got? Sorry, one sec. Can we have the questions coming into our monitors, please? Thank you. Did you guys Thank hear that? I, I, yes. Do you want I to, can't hear Can you repeat it now, please? Thank okay. You. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. There he is. Day three, we figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Monique. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just curious, uh, how many of you actually like knew each other prior to your acting careers, or did all of your interaction and, and like uh, getting to know each other happen through the jobs that you got? That's a good question. Good question. Ours was all through, uh, yeah, actually that's a good question because a lot of people assume that Michelle getting into it came through our connections, and all of, even though we were fully in the entertainment industry, there's so many avenues. I'm in such and a different section. Her section was, so was all new people, so there was nothing. Uh, all these people that we've met have been uh, through this, have been through uh, Michelle's work. I don't know about you guys. But. Yeah. Well, I it, still it's kind of connected. I, I knew Blair. But it was still through a, a work career yes. thing. We met through Yvonne of the Yukon. Yeah, yeah. A very we, obscure, very bizarre. We uh, banged series. his door with us with a crazy idea for a series. And I, you, you guys had not produced any voice or, or stuff that was voiced in Vancouver, and that, or had you? Yeah, yeah. What, we, what was the first stuff that you started recording? Uh, yeah, the minor leagues and oh, Yvonne right. of the Yukon and what about Mimi all at the same time? Yeah, so it was all okay. Yeah, so it, yeah, it was pretty fresh then, but still, it, they're all kind of industry related. Yeah, but um, I'd say, like, I mean, you guys are. Well, we met through the. Well, yeah, we're friends. Like, yeah, that's yeah, the thing. Like, they're the like, real friends. Like, we, you know, we have but, work friends. Yeah, work. <laughs> <laughs> friends, but, but we all but like seriously, it's like you know, people, at some point, but you guys are like you go buddies, like yeah. these, these two. So, so yeah. say so, buddies. So. <laughs> I think the, an, the answer to your question is yeah, we met each other. We all met each other through the business. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, John. Uh, uh, my name was Michelle and. Claire, which of the episodes all three of you were in is your favorite? Ah, uh, Crusaders of the Lost Mark. I know yeah, I got to that one too. Hold on, and ooh, okay. Um, I know the, the obvious answer is that one, but I'll try and pick a different one. I would say, okay, there's this one in season one, and I think it's called, um, 
Cruelty Mac, Cruelty, Cutie Mac Crusaders Chronicles, I think? Oh. It's the one where you find out how their cutie marks are all like, what, how they work? Intertwined, yeah. Oh, oh, what they stand for. Yeah, so. no, like that Rainbow Dash's explosion. Oh, the, 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 the like time cut yeah. thing. Everyone's like, oh, I was doing this, and I was yeah, doing this. I love that one. It happened. Yeah. It's like a big boom. You and see a rainbow go across the sky. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a good app. It's a good app. Yeah, I definitely want to say Crusaders of the Lost Mark because that one was super fun. But yeah. also, I guess, Cutie Pops. That one was fun. Oh, too. Cutie Pops was really fun. Or two. Yeah. I just like, all the songs were so fun. Oh, that's yeah. why I like that one the most. And then when you get to hear it back, you're like, wow. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. So this one's for the parents. Torrents. <laughs> what has been the hardest part about raising a kid in the voice acting industry? And on the reverse, what has been the easiest part? Ooh. Parents, take it away. Well, I, I, the hardest part probably with, with I would say with, is, um, especially when, when children are younger, is, is helping them understand rejection because you're, you're setting uh, your child up for to work hard at something and, and, and they know they know and they're gonna get no you're not good enough and, and it's your your performance is not good enough or your voice is not right or um, that that's tough to know that they're gonna uh, get that and that they might get an age especially when these guys are starting and they're really young on shows to understand why am I not good enough what's wrong with my voice why doesn't it sound right and to understand that it's not that it's not good enough, it's just different. They need a different sound. It's uh, yours sounds this way and this one sounds that way and they, the way that this one sounds works better for their show. So it's, it's hard to, to put your kid in a scenario where they're gonna face rejection, um, uh, but when they constantly want to do it, you have to explain to them that this is gonna come. Um, and the best part for me is the people in the voiceover business. Um, they're so great. Like all this, all this group of people, from the producers um, on Blair's side to the actors to the parents, they're just a great crowd of people in the voiceover industry. There's hardly a bad seed in the bunch. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a real, uh, it's true, really great group. Absolutely, I, can, I agree completely. And maybe the easiest thing in our story was uh, during Dinosaur Train uh, <laughs> commuting. <laughs> I think uh, one of the challenges, and, and I liked what Ian said about you know film and TV, the, the feeling cautious about that because so much emphasis is placed on how you look, and that's not something you want your child to be, you know, to identify or to um, oh, what's that word? You don't want them to define themselves from that. Um, but the other thing with film and TV particularly is that uh, when they work on set on film uh, movies or television shows, there is a real um, hierarchy that's already established in the industry and the actors uh, are treated really well on set. And um, as parents, the problem, well, there's lots of problems with that. Um, <laughs> with, but, but especially for parents of young children, we're not wanting them to think that they are any better than the person who's opening their trailer door or that is holding the cables or uh, behind the camera or anything. And just because people are treating them special, there's nothing, you know, everybody is equal. So keeping them grounded, keeping them aware that everybody deserves to be treated with respect even in an industry which is not very respectful of some of the roles that are in it. Uh, I think that's one of the, the biggest challenges is always drilling that in that you know we're all equal here and everybody deserves respect. Um, the easiest part for us has been because our schedule, Michael's and my schedules, uh, and probably all the parents, has been are always erratic, are always changing. Uh, we always have to make last minute adjustments, and she got used to that early, and we're able to quickly adapt to when things come up for her, and she's also learned how to adapt when when we're always uh, having to change a plan. So. Uh, I think the hardest part for me was uh, staying out of 
critiquing Maddie's things because when she was little, she would put on, like, do, like, you know, you'd get this thing, like, three characters, and then she'd go in her room, and I'd hear her practice, and then she'd come out and go, okay, so here they are, what do you think? And I, I didn't really want to say too much because if I said something, uh, it might be taken the wrong way or what have you. So, but then she'd go, well, well you're not saying anything. That means you don't like it. <laughs> Do you remember that? I was a difficult child. <laughs> we were all difficult children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, like, all I think that's so, a universal So anyway, and being a director, that was hard, but uh, we found our way and it was, uh, it worked out. Uh, and I would say that the uh, other hard thing was um, when Maddie uh, reversed the roles and made me do a voice in one of her school films. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, that was that was wild. What was my what was my weird one? It was. One uh, ooh, it was like like I'm so old I can barely walk. Or I'm so old I can barely walk. Yeah, something like that. And Maddie was a harsh uh, director. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, I have. It was it was pretty easy. Maddie, Maddie, like uh, Mich uh, uh, Michelle, I think, and the rest of the kids, they were very. They learned to um, do their homework, and get out of school. They have to go in a car, fight through traffic, get read their scripts. I mean, that's another thing. It's it's a hard. They work hard, you know. They they, they have to read the scripts, they have to understand the story, and they have to practice. And uh, they were all very easy. I mean, Maddie was very easy. I didn't have to bug her to do that. No. I think if you have to bug them to do it, then they're, yeah. uh, they shouldn't be in that industry. Yeah. I think we can all agree with yeah. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Next question. Thank you. We have just, it just so everybody knows, we have about eight minutes left on the panel, and of course we want to get through as many of the it questions. Says, it says ten. ten what do you mean, wild? <laughs> super fast questions. Super fast answers, super fast questions. Let's go. Okay, um, this is a question I've always had since I was a kid, since I knew what voice acting was. Um, Whenever you get a script, like through email or you get it at a table read, have you ever just looked at it, rolled your eyes and say, I gotta read this, or have you ever objected to anything in the script? Oh, we've definitely objected to some, some things in the script. Um, we, Michelle booked a gig once, there was a voiceover gig, and uh, the sides on the audition were fine, and then they, she booked it, and we got the script, and it had bad language in it, and I think you were like, 10 or 11 or something, and I told her agent, I said, I'm sorry, that she's not, and her agent had... Uh, and it was like a national film board thing, yeah. right? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. I didn't know that project, yeah. Definitely. They changed it, yeah. I've, nothing's been, like, totally awful, I think. I've Sometimes I've read a script, like, for stuff that I haven't gotten, especially, like, film and TV and stuff, um, and I've, like, flipped through it, and I'm like, what is, what is going on? What is happening? <laughs> There's, so there's a little bit of like rolling eyes in there, but nothing is like awful that's ever happened. Yeah, I can't think of anything. I'm just a oh, terrible parent. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, didn't get to ask this on Friday, so you all heard a few lines from the show, but do you think you could have said in character safe books from other franchises. Uh oh, what other Just franchises? Other characters. I need a weapon. <laughs> so Halo, that's what Master Chief says. I need a weapon. I need an apple cannon. <laughs> I can do something <clears throat> not from a franchise or a cartoon, but it's from my favorite ride in Disneyland. Oh. Hold on to them hats and glasses, because this here's the wildest ride in the wilderness. Hey, can you do the Spanish version? Huh? What? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I can't. We can hear you. I, I, para su seguridad. Oh. <laughs> like before you go to the Matterhorn. <laughs> yeah. It's big for your mouth. Thanks. Oh, oh. Trust me, I'm the doctor. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. Or Robert Do you have one? No. Okay. Next question. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, guys. Um, 
My name is Prince, otherwise known as Prince Rolly 732 on Instagram and YouTube. And my question is to, of course, Michelle Krieger, and also to uh, Maddie Peters. Uh, what was it like recording the episodes uh, Parental Clients and The Perfect Hair? Did you guys feel like emotional? Because there were some heartfelt scenes in those two episodes. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely really well written episode. Um, I don't, it's interesting, like emotionally, I really don't get affected by music and TV and movies. I don't know, I'm, I'm weird that way, like, not even just stuff that I'm in, but just watching movies. It, I think I've probably only cried from like three movies, never cried from a song. I don't think I've ever cried from a TV episode or really been emotional because I've just been involved with it so much. So I really dissect it like it's work and I don't, I don't, I don't know if I totally digest the emotional aspect of it, even though I'm, I sound emotional as I'm talking, it's weird. I'm sort of like separated from that in a way, but you know, it's a really, really well written episode. And then when I watched it, I was like, oh, this is so sweet. I really, cause seeing it from an outsider's perspective, I feel like I'm almost more emotionally attached to it than when I'm actually recording it, which is weird you think it'd be the other way around. But yeah, I'm really happy with how that turned out. And I get really emotional from TV. So when I read the script, and especially when I was recording, like it's so easy to get caught up in the emotion, for me, to get caught up in the emotion of the acting. So. Yeah, I was definitely feeling it in the recording. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Bailey. Hello. Um, so my question is, what's your favorite part about either directing, acting, or voice acting? Oh. Um, okay, so I've done a couple of short films before that are like really bad, but I made them, so that's probably why. But uh, I really like directing. Because I love being the boss of people. That's my answer. You mentioned that. Yeah. That's all. That's all for me. <laughs> With the acting part. No, no, go for it. Yeah. With the acting part, it, it's it's. Working with the people is, is the best part. It's 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 so fun to get to do what we do. I, you know, sometimes it's almost embarrassing when I'm talking. I just got back from a, a couple weeks ago, a, a 30th high school reunion, and I could just see, you know, the the dried, wizened faces oh, painted yeah. on people that have been in jobs that you clearly yeah. can tell that they don't enjoy and are just stuck there and that are like glued to me to talk about what I do and it sounds so fun and, and all I can say is I, I really like what I do and I have for 25 years and it's, it's almost hard to, to talk to someone who's been doing something they dislike for a long period of time because I love uh, doing what I, what I do. I can't say when somebody said, would you do it for free? Well, I do have bills to pay, yeah. so probably not, but um, I can't think of too many other things I would do that are, that are as much fun as what I currently am doing. Thank you, and unfortunately, I think we only have time for one question left for this panel, so okay. I'll finish it off on a good note here. All right, this goes for any of you. How many hours do you expect how many hours do you expect to work weekly with the kind of job you have? Like, do you expect 40, more than that, less than that? <laughs> Way less than that. Three minutes. It's, it's not a normal job. A, a session, a, a standard session length, even in, in the US or Canada, is four hours. Uh, and sometimes they go the full four hours for a half hour episode. Sometimes you're in and out in 10 minutes, depending on how the production is being done. Yeah. So it, it's, it would be, uh, I, don't, I don't know many actors that work 40 hours a week. No, the, if, you, if you add in the auditions for the many things we don't actually get paid for, like when you audition, audition, and you're in your studio, and you're laying down auditions for things, if you put in all those hours and running around trying to get to the different things, it'll sure add up. Then, yeah, yeah, that's, that, true. Like, that's the true. like we're bouncing around to studios and driving all over the place and auditioning, and you might only have two, three gigs that week you're actually getting paid for, but you're running around doing a ton of other stuff, promoting yourself and auditioning for things. So I think there's probably been some 40 hour weeks when you think about how long yeah. you're in the studio, but it's pretty rare. You're probably gonna run into a voice actor that worked um, in, in studio 40 hours that week because you burn out pretty fast if you had that many hours. It's, it's really tough to equate what we do with a normal work week. Mm -hmm. it, that, I think that's probably the answer. 
Right, thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Are we going? Oh, we got one. We can do it. Because you have a lovely costume. <laughs> not exactly a question. I took the challenge to draw backs with the scissors. Oh. oh! There we go. We have our answer now. Well, thank you. A big, yeah, I was just going to say a big thank you to everybody here on this panel. Thank you, guys. Thank you to Jeff Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, we have thank you so one much. last autograph session this afternoon. Yes, I think we're all going yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, now. Come on, now. Let's well, see us. From 1 15 to 3 15, is that right? Ish. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Up till about 3, yeah. last session. Enjoy the rest of your BronyCon 2017!